Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about perfecting your sleep and energy. Okay. So normally an average person will go through four 90 minute sleep cycles. They're waves from a superficial sleep to a deep sleep. Okay. Four times through the night. Uh, the ideal time to go to bed that aligns with your hormones would be right around 1045 to even up to 11 o'clock at night. Okay. That's the optimum time to go to sleep. Um, just to catch that first wave. If you miss this first wave, sometimes you have to wait a period of time before you catch it. So you're tired. You ever notice like when you're really tired at night and then all of a sudden you stay up and all of a sudden now you're awake because you miss the wave. Okay. So there's little on off switches in your brain, the back part of the brainstem that cause you to go to sleep and then wake up. There are little hormonally controlled on off switches that work with a little clock inside your, your brain as well. You have a little clock. It's called the super chiasmatic nuclei. Not that you need to know that, but basically it's a little clock that is regulated by light and dark. So if you're in your office all day long and you don't really get outside, that can throw off your sleep cycles. Now, as far as, um, what happens in the REM sleep? REM sleep is not the deep sleep. It's a superficial sleep that you're almost, the wavelength is almost similar to when you're awake, but you actually are having vivid dreams that you remember. Okay. The real rejuvenating sleep is when you hit the Delta. Okay. Down here. So this is what I want to talk about. How do you achieve your full capacity of Delta wave sleep? That's how you generate energy. You don't want to stimulate yourself during the day. You want to get the sleep, which will naturally recharge you just like a battery. So you can have energy during the day. So the Delta wave sleep gives you the most restorative repair, regeneration, growth, immune system repair of any of the sleep cycles. It also increases a hormone called growth hormone. Growth hormone in a child helps them grow. An adult, it's more of an anti-aging because there's a certain point where you stop growing. It's an anti-aging hormone. It's involved in weight loss, repairing muscle after exercise. So all the benefit of your exercise occurs through growth hormone in the Delta wave sleep. Okay. So if you're not sleeping, then you should use that as an indicator to know that you shouldn't be exercising too hard because you're going to overtrain and you're not going to repair and you kind of break things down. In fact, when you have insomnia and you don't sleep very good, you can put a lot of stress on your heart. Okay. On the days you don't sleep, you should do walking, um, and not push it because you could actually increase your chance of getting a heart attack. Um, so the thing that I want to talk about is that you have several scenarios here. You have a situation where you can't get to sleep, or you wake up at two in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep and you're fully awake and you're just like, your mind's going, you're probably more awake here than you are in the morning. Or the best sleep is an hour before the alarm clock goes off or you wake up exhausted or you're up with your bladder all night long. Okay. So each one of those situations are a little bit different. Number one, can't get to sleep is a simple, uh, mineral deficiency, either deficiency of calcium, magnesium or potassium. Okay. All three of those will keep you up at night and you just can't wind down. Those minerals are the uh, calming minerals. All right. Uh, wake up at two. That's more of a higher adrenal cortisol. So your, your adrenals are kind of jacked up in it. And, uh, the, the cortisol is on a circadian rhythm and it's altered to the point where it just kicks in there. And it's almost like it kind of like it activates uh, cortisol and adrenaline and wakes you up. Okay. And so you're just awake, ready to go. So if that's the case, you need to support the adrenal glands. Now, if your bladder is making you wake up every hour, then and, and basically what is normal is not getting up at all. Okay. Some people say, well, I don't have a bladder problem. Well, I get up four, three times a night. Well, that's not normal. You, sh you should be able to go through the whole night. That this right here is an insulin problem. It's insulin resistance. I'll put a link down below because every time that I have people improve their insulin uh, dysfunction, this symptom goes away. If you ever notice a diabetic 
they're peeing excessively, right? Well, there's definitely a connection between blood sugars and urination and fluid, right? So that should help you with that. If you're waking up exhausted, then there's several other things that we need to do, which I'm going to get into right now. Number one, um, I've noticed that when I consume the right amount of vegetables, which gets the minerals, gets all the other nutri nutrients that I need, I sleep much, much better than when I don't consume enough vegetables. So you need to have between 7 and 10 cups, just a couple salads. It's not hard to do. If you're bloating from your vegetables, that's not going to work either. So you're going to have to find some vegetables that you can consume comfortably without bloating. Uh, number two, do not consume excessive protein. Large amounts of protein, especially late at night or for dinner. You go out for dinner, you have this huge steak. Not a good idea because protein is a stimulant and that will wake you up, prevent sleeping. So you want three to six ounces, okay? And I would, at, the, at that dinner, I would have your salad first and then your protein versus the protein first and then a side salad. It's just, you, you'll find that you won't eat as much protein if you have your salad first or your vegetables first. Too much caffeine. Okay, do one small cup in the morning. That's what I recommend. You start getting more and it does affect your sleep quality. And even tea will uh, do that as well. So, and even chocolate with... It's not caffeine, it's another stimulant that will also keep you up if you have too much of that. Uh, small amounts. Okay, of course, sugar-free. Snacking at night. Let's say you have dinner and then between dinner, let's say at 6 o'clock to 11, you are snacking popcorn, chips, peanuts. You just keep eating, putting things in your mouth. Well, that's going to really uh, raise insulin. It's going to keep you from sleeping as well because you're going to feel bloated. So what you want to do for dinner is have enough fat and vegetable because this gives you the potassium to be satisfied so you're not so hungry at night okay if you're new to my videos i'll put some links down below but most of you already know that um, okay number five reading sugar because that raises insulin and insulin will definitely keep you up at night as well diabetics do not sleep well uh, also insulin will deplete potassium Okay, insulin will deplete the potassium, and then what will happen when potassium is low, the heart rate goes higher. So try to go to sleep with your heart rate elevated, like in at 90 or even 100. You're not going to sleep. So if you can hear your pulse rate in your ear on your pillow at night, boom, boom, that means you need more potassium. It could be because you're not having enough vegetables or your insulin is too high. Okay, and that comes from insulin resistance. And then, um, so we want to keep the pulse rate low. Um, it's, it's really surprising. Uh, some people have a pulse rate of like 110. Normal is 72. But ideally, you want it even lower, especially if you want to try to sleep. Um, overtraining. Here you are. You want to lose weight. and You start working out. You do the boot camps. And that alone can keep you from sleeping. Overtraining, getting your pulse rate too high. That's why I like interval training, where you're, doing a, you're getting your pulse rate up for a short period of time and you're letting it rest for a longer period of time. When you do CrossFit, which is actually not good for the average person, your recovery times are so short that it's going to affect your sleeping because an average person doesn't recover that fast. So you spike your pulse rate, you start resting, the pulse rate comes down a little bit, and you start working on it again. So you never allow your body to come fully all the way down and reset to the bottom level. So <clears throat> it's a problem. Walking. Um, Regular walking on the days that you don't do the high intensity thing. Go out for a long walk, get space. That is the absolute best thing for sleep. Just getting out there in nature and just getting your space versus sitting in office 24 seven, okay? So, and then lastly, um, I use uh, my sleep aid, which has, there's two versions. One is a um, vegetarian, which without the glandular, adrenal glandular support. And the other one is the regular one with glandular support. So you have your choice in that one. But it doesn't have melatonin. It has some really awesome combinations of uh, certain herbs and nutrients to really put you in a nice, wonderful sleep to support the adrenal. I take one before I go to bed. Uh, it really helps. So you might want to try that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Put your comments below. Hey, you probably already subscribed, but if you haven't, press this little button down below and I will keep you updated.